In this episode of the On.net show, we're going to learn how to generate documentation using the DocFX tool. Stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of the On.net show, and today we're going to learn about docs from a good friend, Dan. How you doing, man? Hey, how are you? So you haven't been on the show before. Why don't you tell us really quickly who you are and what exactly do you do at Microsoft? Sure. Uh, my name is Dan Delmarski. I'm a uh, senior program manager uh, mm -hmm. in DevRel, so same organization as you. Right. Uh, but I work on the docs team. So uh, my responsibility uh, is to essentially make sure that we have a good UX around mm -hmm. docs, that it's usable, and that we ship things that our customers love. Right. So what are some of the projects that the docs team actually works on? Sure. So we built a lot of tools recently. Uh, if you've heard of the samples browser, the one place where you can discover old code samples of Microsoft ships. It's sure. all powered by GitHub. It's all in one place. So mm -hmm. docs are Microsoft samples. Yeah. Uh, we build tools around interactivity. So for example, if you want to try .NET uh, code in the browser and you want to learn sure. how to do this, uh, we partnered with uh, the Try.NET team, so Maria yeah, Nagaga, yeah. Scott Hanselman, mm -hmm. uh, and we uh, integrated the Try.NET and Docs. Uh, we do a lot of collaboration with the Graph team, so Graph Explorer and Docs. Nice. Uh, we're kind of serving the entire company, if you want to look at it the best way. Right, right, right. I know you also have like the Azure Cloud Shell stuff is in there. Uh, yes, absolutely. So we are very passionate about making sure that you are successful as quick as possible with Docs. So mm -hmm. any sort of inter interactivity like Cloud Shell, Try.NET, uh, REST, uh, try it, that you can execute REST calls in a browser. We're all about that. So I know um, like this is a non-trivial product you're working on, right? Like it's docs.microsoft.com. It's more than right. just a website. It's, it's like a product. I'm sure there's a right. lot of custom tools and a lot of infrastructure that had to go into making that. Right. So the biggest piece of our infrastructure is really DocFX, okay. which is kind of at the core. It's a static documentation generator. Okay. Tool. So if you're familiar with static blog generators like Hugo or yeah, Jekyll, yeah, yeah. this is something very similar but tailored for documentation. So uh, we, are, we have this open source project. It's mm -hmm. on, again on GitHub. Uh, it's only open. It has a number of plugins mm -hmm. that allow you to generate documentation for pretty much anything you can imagine. So .NET, Java, Python, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Go, you name it. You can generate docs and plug it into DocFX and then host it anywhere because it's a static yeah. site. So you can put it on Azure Blob Storage. You can put it on GitHub Pages. All those things just, just work out of the box. Right, right, right. And again, you use it for docs.microsoft.com. Mm -hmm. But if I had my own smaller open source project, maybe a personal thing, is, would that be something that I could easily use and set up and get started with? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's not constrained to any specific use case. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use it for your open source project, for your .NET library, for your Python library, it's all, it's all out there. Yeah. Uh, we document it. Uh, I try to blog about it every once in a while sure, sure, sure. to tell people, hey, if you have a Python library, here's the one-liner that you can use to generate yeah. the docs. So, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Well, why don't we take a look at the website and maybe we could see how we could get sure, started with that. Absolutely. So, um, this is the DocFX website. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, it's on GitHub. Yeah. It's open source. So, by the way, if you want to contribute to the website itself, you don't like something, uh, we accept contributions. Right. So, um, it's all powered by DocFX itself, so we eat our own dog food in a way. Sure, sure. Uh, if you look at the site, we have tutorials, specs, API documentation, templates, and plugins. So anything that you're curious about and learning about, it's on the site. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you click on download, it'll take you to GitHub, where you can look at our latest releases and see okay. what is you know the release that you're interested in. We see you know all the change logs, just like any other open source project, right? Like sure. it's and, and this is at the core of Docs. I think this is the mm -hmm. big differentiator when a lot of people ask, like, oh, can you open source the things that Docs uses? Yeah. It's already open source. Just right. go download it and run it. Right, right. Uh, and it's very easy to actually get started. So it's powered by .NET Core, uh, okay. and uh, you can download it and just run locally. So can I show you how it works? Yeah, let's take a look and see what it looks like. Uh, great. So I'm going to jump over here to PowerShell, okay. and I'm going to go to my downloads folder, and I'm going to make a directory. Okay. Uh, let's call it docfx test. So now that I have this directory, I can well, essentially what I can do, I can bootstrap a new docfx project. So to do that, um, because I don't have it in my path, I will uh, go the old school way and just do docfx and then docfx.exe. Um, and then uh, I do init-q. And what this does is a quick initialization. Okay. It, you, know, it, you can skip the Q parameter if you will, but then you'll have to answer a bunch of questions like what theme do you want to use, where do you want to place it. So I'm just going to 
ignore all that and just say Q, which means uh, it, it does it silently and it does it uh, for me. Sure. So, it, so it's good to really quickly go ahead and scaffold this stuff out. But then another thing that I, I, I love about this that I see is really interesting is that when you download it from GitHub, you get a binary. So I, right. I'm not downloading code from GitHub. Right. I'm downloading a release, and the release is a binary. So essentially, I'm using like the CLI tool that I could use right. to scaffold out like a documentation project. Right. Which means that I can automate it, right? And I can right. put in a lot of scripts or exactly. PowerShell or Bash or something like that. Yeah. So when you uh, say if you want to plug it into GitHub Actions or mm -hmm. uh, Azure Pipelines, you can easily just pull the latest release from yeah. GitHub and you have the binary. You don't need to compile anything. You don't need to you know, test, run tests or anything like that. It's just sure. there. Got it. Got and it. after that, you can scaffold. You can use existing projects with it right out of the box. So and do I need any um, prerequisites on my machine or is it like a self-contained executable? Well, you'll need .NET Core. Okay. But uh, if you run on Mac OS or Linux, I personally ran it with Mono before. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I, it works fine. It works just fine. Uh, and it's cross platform. Yeah. Like all our tools, again, are uh, by their nature not really constrained to Windows. Got it. Right? So if you run on Mac, Linux, you pick it, it's there. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just want to check on that really quick. Yeah. All right, so we have this project that's scaffolded. So we out. have the scaffolded project, which essentially what it does is creates a bunch of uh, very baseline configurations. Some test yeah. articles, the docfx.json file, which is the configuration. Mm -hmm. And so what I can do now is, so let's see, uh, I'm going to do, uh, go to my folder, which is docfx test. Uh, let's see. And uh, oh, let's see, did I, oh, I did not go into it. That's why. Uh, oh well, so we have a different project. So it's a docfx project folder. So I'm going to go into it. Uh, and if I look at it, so I have the API, API doc, articles, images, SRC. So anything that you would expect from a static site, right? Sure, so sure, again, sure. this is baseline. You can modify it. So what I can do now is, and I will make this full screen, uh, I will jump uh, and just run docfx. So what this does, it takes all the static content, the markdown files, the YAML files, which by the way, we use YAML files for structured content. So things that we generate from uh, APIs. So for example, if I have a .NET project, a Java project, that is not structured to markdown. So we want to be, because those are machine readable formats, yeah. we put it all into YAML and yeah. you can use that. Okay. So I'm going to run docfx and what this does is this will just build. And by building, all it does is converts the existing uh, markdown in YAML yeah. into HTML. Okay. So with template and does the HTML conversion, uh, and then we just have to wait for it, essentially for it to complete. If it has any issues or errors, it will show you in the build logs. And if you are running this in pipelines or GitHub Actions, you'll very easily be able to kind of see what went wrong if something went wrong. So somebody malformed the link. Somebody forgot to include an alt text for an image. And sure. by the way. It's very customizable. So if you have specific constraints in your environment where you need to, um, say, verify that somebody doesn't include HTTP links yeah. and put HTTPS, you can create those custom rules. And when the build happens, we'll validate against those rules to make sure that you have the right documentation and the right kind of constraints that you put in place. Sure. And, and again, just to be clear, I know you said build. A right. lot of times when as developers we think build, we think, Oh, there's code that we're right. running, and we're going to compile, and there's going to be DLLs and stuff like right, that. Right, right. What you're really talking about is validating Markdown, because the documentation is being written in Markdown, right? Right. Like, so it's validating the Markdown and the YAML and and, and all of those types right. of assets to make sure that they are they're accessible. Make sure that they adhere to whatever rules that you you know Absolutely you customize correct. and specify. Yes, and it creates HTML. And once okay. you have the HTML, so right now I have this built. So I'm going to go to Windows Explorer. And I'm just going to the docfx project folder. And notice there's a folder that's site called site. So in this site, there's HTML files. So if I open this index.html, and I will use Edge Dev, my favorite browser, um, it's an HTML page. Nice. So, but this is me operating with HTML. Now, what we have out of the box in the CLI is the ability to actually serve this as a, uh, a static website. As a static website. So I can do a docfx serve and then specify the folder. And now I have a local host. Oh, nice. So I can just go to my browser here and open a new tab and say localhost 8080, and bam. This is Docfx. Oh, nice. It's running in uh, from my CLI, and I can go to my articles. I have a table of context, introductions, uh, you know, the test article. Yeah, I can yeah, yeah. go in here now. So the Docfx project folder. I can look at uh, say the articles, and there's intro.md, and I'm gonna uh, open this. Uh, let's see. Let's actually 
I don't have something to open, so I'm just using Notepad. Um, so I will add something like test. Uh, this is great. And then I'm going to use great as a, say, link yeah. uh, to HTTPS, see, channel 9.msdn.com. Yeah. I'm going to save this. And I'm going to hop right back here. Uh, what we don't have yet. You don't uh, have hot reload? Is hot reload, yeah. Uh, I, I definitely miss it, and I wish we had, it. but it's something that's going to come eventually. At some point. Um, so I'm in my project folder, so I'm going to rebuild essentially the content. Uh, and we have a new version of DocFX coming up very soon that will make this very quick. So okay. right now, if you have a lot of files, it, you might still feel a little slow at yeah, times, yeah. Sure. Um, but we're working on scaling that up. Okay. So I built this, and then again, I serve this, and I will go to my browser, and I reload, and I have you know, a working page with a link, so we just converted Markdown to HTML. You can start, you have full control of the table of contents, so if you want to customize what right, this is right. like, you want to customize any themes. On DocFX itself, we have a lot of themes that you can use out of the yeah. box. So if you don't like the current theme, and for example, if you're shipping Android documentation, sure. and you want the uh, more structured uh, Googly theme. Sure, maybe you, you want a material design, or you had some exactly. custom look and feel, yes. or UX that you wanted to. Fully customizable, fully detached from the content, okay. and uh, it does not affect you. You need to modify your Markdown or the YAML. You just package a new theme or modify the CSS. And we have a yeah. lot of teams at Microsoft mm -hmm. within the company that use this tool for their own documentation uh, inside Microsoft. Yeah. So uh, different teams have different constraints in terms of privacy and whatnot. And, and they customize DocFX for that. Nice. What I like about this experience that you've shown is I really just have one tool, right? I right. just have that docfx.exe mm -hmm. file. And it does everything, right? Like it scaffolds the project, it builds the project, it serves it. Yes. You know what I mean? So I don't have to worry too much about jumping back and forth between different things to kind of get my documentation generated. Right. And all I need to do is I could use any text editor now. Right. right? So you could use VS Code if we wanted to. And you know, VS Code has great support for Markdown. Or if I could use. If I'm a Vim user, I could use Vim of or course. Emacs uh, or you know, if you know, whatever you, people you, want to use. If you want to be stuck for a while and not be able to exit, <laughs> sure. Sure, 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 sure. Um, but we actually have a tool uh, that our team ships. It's called the Docs Authoring Pack. It's an okay. extension for VS Code mm -hmm. that, yes, we designed it for Docs, mm -hmm. but it can work with any DocFX installation. Nice. So if you want to have you know, an easy way to insert images and not worry about all these markdown extensions, we have the tool for that. Nice. That's awesome. And it's free. That's great. And what else I, I noticed about this? So really, we're just talking about a static site generator Correct. with specific, I guess, um, functionality and structure yes. around creating docs. But you could probably use this to create an ebook if you wanted to. Absolutely. Or you could use it to create, you know, any type of online reference, API Absolutely. documentation, you know, tutorials, workshops, like all these types of things you could use this tool for. Yes, and I'm actually would be very excited to see how creative people can get with this. We've seen uh, people try to use this for their blogs, mm -hmm. which this is not designed for blogs, but we've seen it applied to. Yeah. Uh, we've seen uh, eBooks where uh, you know you can because you have the structure of the table of contents. It's not like a regular blog. Got it. You can structure it in a way that feels like you're reading a book. Like nice. if you're on docsmax.com, you will kind of see that pattern. Great, that's awesome, man. So, if folks want to, you know, get started and get involved with this, like, what are some links that we could go to? Uh, sure. So, the number one thing that I would recommend to check out is docfx. Okay. This is the official page. The latest documentation, latest releases mm -hmm. are here. There is a blog post that I wrote that is aka.ms slash mm -hmm. I want docs, nice. no spaces. Uh, and you, you will essentially see how that is hooked to Azure Pipelines. And you can just kind of understand, if I want to set up a CI with DocFX, how do I do this? That post goes into the detail. But I would say as long as you have this bookmarked, the DocFX website, everything is here. So if you want to read about specifications for the YAML files, for how we do markdown parsing, it's all here. Awesome, man. Well, hey, thank you so much for being on. This is great. Yeah. I think it's going to be good for a lot of folks to see how easy it is that you could use this tool to create your own documentation. Absolutely. And we want your feedback. So if something works or something doesn't work, go to GitHub, let us know. We're very uh, open and we're happy to address any issues. Great. That's awesome, man. And thank you all for watching. This has been another episode of the On.net show where we learned about DocFX, what you could use to generate documentation for any of your projects. Mm -hmm.